Hey, hey. So, uh, there's uh, been a lot going on here with the build, and um, if you were at the Recon G6 in Warsaw, Ontario uh, last weekend, then, or I guess a little over a week ago, you would have had a chance to preview this, but I want to show you now where I'm at. Um, I'm starting to finalize some of the things that I need to do for the suspension. Uh, I've got an interior electronics layout and stuff, so lots of cool stuff coming up on this video. Now, first off, I want to say a big thank you to Hey OK. I have uh, my Hey OK stuff is in. This is uh, the little light controller that I'm going to use for the rear lights. And uh, in his package comes the uh, light switch here. And this does the oscillating for the amber and the blue. And in the package here, you can also order up the resistors and the proper LEDs. So the package is actually, there's, I mean, it's complete, right? This is all that you're going to need to do the job right here. Um, pretty clear instructions on it too, which is always nice. You connect this between the receiver and the ESC. Uh, and then it, you, it has brake lights um, when the throttle is at neutral and the KOH lights are flashing uh, as they do constantly. So that's a really cool kit. Thank you very much, Hey OK Electronics. I also picked up a uh, light switch. This is another channel uh, with an electronic switch here that powers up a whole bunch of rock light strips. Check those out. They're waterproof. Uh, pretty nice uh, to have a, a waterproof uh, plug-and-play package like this from Hey OK. So that's really cool. There's plenty of lead on there so I can mount these up inside my wheel wells and uh, other places on the truck. And I got four sticky strips here. So I'll be sure to uh, get those installed pretty soon. I also have uh, my winch controller here that I'll show you in the electronics setup. Uh, the One of the first things I want to talk about is... Um, I'm going to use these axles as an example here. I remember I was talking earlier in the videos about the springs. The um, I wanted to change the front suspension geometry so that I could use narrower leaf springs that are closer together and that would give me full steering with my big tire. So as an example, this is uh, my Bauhaus RC um, Yoda axles that comes from uh, Bauhaus RC. You can find them on Shapeways. You can find Bauhaus RC on um, RC Crawler uh, vendor at Scale Builders Guild. Stuff like that. So look around for Bauhaus RC. But anyway, uh, you'll also find a link for them on the GCM Racing website because uh, we sell the hardware kits for their axle housings. These are the Toyota's uh, fitment. Now, you see how the rear leaf and the front leaf are the same. They're the same width of, around, okay, across. So I'll try to show this. Now, what I've actually done, you see they're the same spacing, okay? This is the same as a TF2 uh, RC four-wheel drive products. The typical leaf spring axle has this spacing across, the, between the leaves, okay? This is typical for RC. So what I've done is uh, I've actually made um, the leaf springs on the front, I've narrowed them together. So what you end up with is actually the front being inside the rear. You can kind of see that now in the video. What I've done is I've actually moved the front leaf spring over. So in, in my TMX file, in my new axle prints that I'm doing for this, for this cruiser, okay? The suspension on the bottom looks like this. Let me pull this out of here. So, what that means to the suspension is, how do I do this? So on the back, my leaf spacing on the back, outside to outside, is uh, pretty much 85 millimeters. Okay, so my leaf spacing is pretty much 85 millimeters in the back. And then in the front, you can see how in the back, the leafs are outside the frame rail. And then in the front, they're actually sitting on top of the frame rail, which is underneath actually. So the spacing in the front is narrower down to 70. Okay, 72 I think. 
So what we've done is actually brought the leaf springs together. Mathematically, I think it's, it's 12 millimeters, so we've got six on each side that we've moved the leaf inward. And what that's going to do is give me the clearance I need in the wheel well to steer the full steering on the truck. So, now that I've got that stuff on, uh, the front suspension is in. I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to give you a tour of where I'm at with the print. You kind of could see in the, in the bottom view that there's a lot of stuff going on inside and the interior, the electronics is in, so let's pull that apart and find out what's going on. First of all, um, a couple of interesting things I found out about this uh, kit, which I didn't know. The uh, Besides me just painting the tube gray so it looks better, um, I have to still do some welding on here. I have to do the welding on the rear KOH light tabs, which I'll do uh, sometime soon. But what I didn't know is that the cruiser grill that comes chrome uh, is, of course, copper plated before the nickel gets put on. That's typical. So when you do chroming or nickel plating, you have to put down a base metal, which is usually copper um, or gold. Uh, in this case, I'm pretty sure it's copper because the print, I th the uh, mold, I think, is black plastic. Is it black? Black, maybe white, but I don't remember. But anyway, the actual plastic mold is some kind of a white or black. I can't remember. And then they they actually metal plate over top of the plastic. And in this case, because it's copper and then nickel or copper and then chrome, you can sand it or scuff it or buff it and actually create sort of a coppery tint, a rusty sort of coppery tint. You can see that. It's really cool, actually. Kind of neat. Now, of course, the cruiser grill is supposed to be white, so it's kind of irrelevant that the thing is actually chrome because who cares? I mean, it's nice for the light bucket to have a chrome light bucket, but uh, you don't actually care, I think. If you're going to paint it white, then who cares, right? So... Anyway, that's how that fits on. Uh, my radiator panel is out right now, uh, along with my servo and a few other things. So uh, you get to really easily see kind of how the front end is going to come together. Um, I like the look. I think it looks uh, off-roady. The bumper fits the body pretty well. I'm, I can't wait to get my magnets on here so I can actually hold this down. That'll be cool. Uh, and then you can get to see the leaf spring attachment here. So I've got the... Uh, the Toyota 152 C-Max shackles on it. That's what they're called. And the leaf is sitting underneath the frame rail. Now the C-Max rail is already so narrow, it's narrower than pretty much everything else that's on the market any, anywhere. Um, the, the, the frame rails are so narrow because we have, of course, scale drivetrain. And when you have a scale drivetrain, you don't need all kinds of space for spur gears and all that other stuff. So. The frame rails are small on a C Max, narrow on a C Max, they always are. And then I have the leaf under, which gives me huge steering. It's kind of cool. The, the uh, mechanics of it is kind of cool. It's more than just sort of, you know, well, that looks neat or that's going to work. There's actually some engineering thought put into that so that so you can get good suspension and still actually steer the truck. Uh, now, in the back. We uh, have the tube bumper done, of course. You can see the leaf springs ready to go for the new axles, which are in print, the TMX axles. And uh, I decided it was time to do some interior work. So what I've actually done here is I designed up this three-piece uh, floor pan and inner fender kit. Now you can see that the, f the inner fender kit sits right on the frame. Uh, it's just pancaked right on there. And it bolts in to the cross members that are in the frame rail easy. It also fills in the whole back panel and it's uh, it comes right out. So I can take out this this particular piece without trying very hard. It will come right out of the truck. But the good news is it gives me the rear floor. It covers over the wheel wells and it gives me space for my, for my uh, front interior pan which I also want to show off to you. I'm started doing a little hot forming this is just manually hot formed black styrene, but you can see how it goes right up into the tunnel. So I have my dash area to build on, and I have this uh, hot formed tunnel here that I can use for the base of my um, interior, and I still have these huge footwells here. So my guys, that my drivers will have lots of space. 
Now, what about the dash stuff? Okay, so let me pull this off. That's always the same. The body still just pops right off. You can kind of get a feel for how that rear floor pan is put in there now. It just sits around the cage, so you can take it right out. Like that. And it bolts into the cross members. And that's all it is. It's just kind of like this Z, sort of on each side, you know. Bolts in. It's uh, 3D printed in three pieces, so I have two shoulder sides and then the floor pan. Uh, it's very light, so and strong enough that I can use it for uh, mounting cargo in there, and it should be good. Now, excuse all the tape, but I'm actually trying to do the electronics setup in here. So, what I've done is uh, I created this little floor piece here. The little the little uh, base piece becomes the firewall. If you can kind of see what I'm doing here, this is kind of the firewall. It sits behind the motor, and uh, it holds up this radio box on top. Okay. I taped it all together because the electronics were all falling out. Now I've got my winch controller here, and I've got my receiver in this side, and then I've got a big slot in the front here for my battery, my 1500 battery. And uh, then on this side, I've got my speed control already in there. So essentially, without having some wiring run across the firewall and down the frame, I pretty much have it all in. Um, you know, I mean, that's all I need right there. And the battery weight is central, and the batteries are small. So I should have no problem with the weight distribution. Um, it's higher than I'd like. I would, of course, love to have all my electronics and battery down in the floor. And uh, for now, I'm going to leave them up there and see how that works out and if I like it. If I can manage to make the weight distribution work with the electronics up top, I'm going to leave it. And the reason I'm going to leave it is because when I need to do a battery change or service something, I can literally just pull that off. Right? This is so straightforward now. Um, everything's covered. There'll be no wires showing. It's all internal. And when I want to service it, I can just take the body off. It, it'll be on magnets. And uh, the body just sits down there. And everything's covered. So, that's my idea. I'm hoping to leave it like that as best I can. And uh, see if I can... You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to finish up the seats now. And the floor pan in the middle. Uh, when I get this stuff done in here... I'll find out if I have enough room underneath to somehow do a really easy removable battery cover or electronic cover. Um, I want to make sure that I can get at the battery without anything, without doing anything. I want to do, that's all I want to do. I want to do nothing more than that. Um, that's as much work as I want to do. No clips, no screws, no nothing. I want to pull off a magnetic cover, change my battery, and I'm, and I'm on the road. So for now, this is the layout I think I'm going to go with. Uh, my TMX axles are coming. I've ordered them from Shapeways, the, the new prototypes for this particular vehicle. Uh, it's a Toyota right side drop, uh, narrow leaf springs in the front, wide leaf in the back. I'm pretty excited. And uh, that's where I'm at with this. Next time you see the video, hopefully by then I will have my D-rings on the back. I'll have my rear light pods put in for the KOH, my D-rings on the front. And uh, I'm really hoping that the axles are here uh, probably in a couple of videos from now. Because um, I think they'll be about two weeks from this time. Now, I kind of have to get my acting gear because I'm building this truck specifically to be Class 2 legal so I can run it in the East Coast Scale Challenge. Uh, and it is it is being built uh, within spec, so that's good. And I should get tons of points for it, as we talked about before. Uh, but my time is running out. I think I have a month. And if my axles don't show up for another two weeks, we're really pushing the limit. So let's hope that the rest of the parts come in and I'm going to get my acting gear and finish up the interior and get this truck rolling. Thanks for watching. Uh, more welding stuff going to happen soon and hopefully some floor pans. Bye-bye.